uh, Deputy John Lahart sharing with Corley, Robert Corley. Yeah, take five minutes. Um, Count Corley, in what uh, the NTA and the Minister <coughs> uh, announced earlier in the summer as the most radical transformation proposal in the history of the state in relation to uh, the Dublin bus public transportation system, the Minister is not here. That says it all. The most radical transformation proposed for public transport in Dublin in the history of the state, the Minister for Transport, is not here. Need I say more? Now, on this side of the House, we recognise there are eight aspects to Bus Connects, and we support seven of them, wholeheartedly support seven of them. Uh, colleagues have gone through them uh, all, from the simplification, of, the simplification of the fares and the ticketing, improvement of bus stop facilities, etc., etc. We agree with seven out of the eight of these. But when you listen to all the debates around the House, our issue is with the area network redesign. Minister, what you uh, have said, Minister O'Connor, essentially is supporting our motion. And actually, if you go around the House and listen to all the contributions of everybody who spoke, regardless of political hue, nearly every bus route in Dublin was mentioned. And that's what our motion speaks to the reversal of the decisions uh, being proposed. And you say, Minister, and Deputy Rock said it, that this is not an implementation proposal. Well, I'm sorry, the NTA's consultant said that if 10% of the proposals were removed, that Bus Connects is a waste of time. So it is an implementation proposal. It's also part, obviously, of Project 2040, but there's been no great uh, government uh, acclamation for this, aside from uh, Minister Ross. I haven't heard the communications unit go into overdrive about bus connects. It is, as one of my colleagues described, instead of connecting people, the evidence coming from public meetings is that they feel and are fearful that this will disconnect them, and I'll speak uh, in a minute about that. On this side of the House, we absolutely acknowledge the gridlock facing this city. And what we've heard and even tested in public opinion at these public meetings, uh, uh, to which thousands of people across Dublin have attended at this stage. In my own constituency, upwards of 1,200 people will have attended the public, public information meetings that I've held. The public will buy into a system of public transport when they are offered segregated bus corridors that essentially operate like a Lewis tram line that will get them from A to B, that regardless of what time of the day or night you take a bus, the time of travel will be the same for everybody, whether it's early morning peak or whether it's the middle of the afternoon. They will buy into a system where you have an obstacle-free journey, so we buy into the spines, um, where buses arrive on time, where there are sufficient buses. So if the infrastructure was created first, people could actually buy into it. People would leave their cars behind because they know there's a reliable system of spines going into and across the city. Um, we support the orbital routes as well. It's another part of the proposal. But this is really putting the cart before the horse. The NTA is proposing to implement bus connects without any of the infrastructure being in place. They said initially that if they would implement it from uh, the third quarter of 2019. Now they've pushed it out to 2020. You cannot implement any of this. You will not persuade one driver to leave their car behind under this proposal. But if they saw uh, proper bus corridors in place, segregated bus corridors, segregated uh, uh, cycle lanes that go and allow an untrammeled journey from A to B, then people can buy into that. What did the driver say? A number of drivers came to my public information meetings and they talked to me even about the existing uh, positions. They said, look, why, the, the existing bus corridors aren't policed. It causes bus drivers huge delay. Uh, we asked them about, for example, the 15 route in Knock Line. It's, it's completely full. The buses are full to overloading by about the fourth stop. And people kind of said, look, why can't you just, why do all buses have to start uh, from the terminus? Why can't they start, uh, send one bus out and start it five stops in? And the bus driver said, the NTA don't allow us to do that because they micromanage the whole thing. Um, the bus routes, I could list all of them. The 54A Count Corla allows connectivity with Talla, Talla Hospital, County Council, social welfare offices for people of Temple Ogan for Greenhills. The 123 allows connectivity from Temple Ogan Greenhills uh, to St James's Hospital. Those routes are going. Uh, other routes have been overloaded. And what do the public say? And I want to finish on this. Two questions the public asked, more often than anything else, was who are the NTA? Is this a done deal? 
And I said to them, and you're saying, no, it's not a done deal. Do you know what I said to the Minister, and I'll finish on this? And in my public consultations, by the way, I gave them all the NTA's official material. There was no, I didn't give them an unvarnished or varnished uh, approach to it. But I said to them, the NTA is answerable to the Minister, and the Minister is answerable to us. And I want to say to the public, Ian Corla, the Minister is not here. And the public may take what they wish out of that. Thank you.